Well, oh, Shoreline, uh, over half a year ago, over six months ago, we started doing these, these devotions. We started in Psalm 1, and last week we finished up with Psalm 150. Now, we didn't do all 150 Psalms, but as I read through the Psalms, I chose the ones that I thought were really speaking to our hearts in this season. We started with three uh, devotionals a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We went down to two on Tuesday, Thursdays. Now we're on Wednesdays. And I'm going to just continue doing this because I love getting a chance to open up this book, God's Word, and share a few thoughts with you in the middle of a week like this on a Wednesday. And so now for the next 10 weeks, I'm sharing 10 of my favorite Bible passages. I'm not going to do like a top 10 countdown, uh, you know, top 10 hits, you know, countdown to the very top one, because all of this is God's Word. And I want to say at the very beginning, as I talk about 10 favorite passages, I believe, you believe, this is God's Word from beginning to end. It's all true. But there's certain passages that have hit my heart and struck my heart. And this week and next week, I want to focus on a couple passages that are, are kind of core Christological passages. They're about Christ. They're about the Messiah. And so I want to read the first one to you and just invite you to listen to these words from Philippians chapter 2. This is called the Great Christ Hymn. And it's really talking about how Jesus is a model for us. And so it begins with these words in verse 5 of Philippians chapter 2. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So we should be thinking like Jesus. So now here's this example of Jesus. As you listen to these words, think about how can my mindset change to be like this? Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him, Jesus, the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, what a passage. What truth. Let me, just, let me just glean five quick thoughts out of this passage that I hope are an encouragement to us. Number one, where it's very, very clear that Jesus Christ was fully divine. This example for us was perfect God, God in human flesh. Very God of very God. And so Jesus Christ was divine. He was God with us. Second, his humility. And we're called to, to think like and to live like Jesus. Incredible humility. He left the glory of heaven by his own choice. He came among us as one of us. He who was infinite somehow became confined in a human body. Uh, the word in the Greek here, uh, is, it, the transliteration is kenosis, but the, but the word means an emptying. He somehow emptied of himself, remaining divine, and yet emptying some of his power and glory so he could come as one of us. That kind of humility is unthinkable. Uh, the angels must have looked and just, just been baffled. How does this God of all gods come as a human being? But that was Jesus' choice in utter humility. He calls us to walk in humility. Sacrifice. He laid his life down. He counted the cost. There is no one in all the universe more sacrificial than the God that we worship. He gave himself fully for us. And we're called to think in ways that are sacrificial and live in ways that are sacrificial. We, li we live in a kind of a self-centered world. I think always has been, but right now, man, my, what I want, what I desire, I want to get what I want, what I want it. I want to be able to order what I want and get it. It better come the way I want it or I'm going to complain. And, and yet here's Jesus just saying, I'll lay myself down. What an example for us. And then in this great Christ hymn, it talks about his humil humility, his coming as one of us, his offering of his life, but then his exaltation. He is lifted up, the name above every name, the one to whom every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Messiah, the leader of our lives, to the glory of God the Father. And so we celebrate him, we worship him, we exalt him and lift him up. In your life, in this day, exalt Jesus every chance you get. And then finally, there's this picture of us bowing down to him. We learn from his example, we walk in humility, we sacrifice and serve faithfully. 
but in his presence, we bow down. I want to challenge you this week. Be a worshiper. Kneel before God. If you're physically able, wake up someday this week and kneel next to your bed or kneel down and say, God, I bow before you. I surrender to you. I lay myself down. Not just in physical actions, but in all you say and all you think and in all you do. So, Philippians chapter 2, the great Christ hymn. Read it, learn it, let God speak to your heart. Lord Jesus, we pray as we walk with you this day that we would have the mindset of you, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. You who were above all but laid yourself down. You who could have demanded service of you, but you served us by sacrificing for us. Let us walk in your presence. Let us walk in your power. Let us celebrate your goodness this day and every day. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, Be sure you join us for worship Sunday in the courtyard. Register in advance or join us online. But I want to challenge you, keep growing in worship as we walk through the book of Romans together. God bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday online or in the courtyard.